Hello YouTube, this is Sam from Tiger Schooling and in this session today we are going to talk about the glial cells also called the neuroglial cells or you can call them the nerve glue alright so actually the glial cells are actually the supportive cells in the central nervous system which means they are related to your brains and whole the spinal cord and every nerve involved in your body so they are actually protector, provide food, a lot of things we're going to discuss, the types of the neuro neuroglial cells in just a bit, but uh, just talk about the glial cells first. They are actually supportive cells of the central nervous system. Uh, unlike neurons, glial cells do not conduct electrical impulses. Remember that this is really important to understand. It might be some people think that they also conduct elect uh, electric impulses, but no, glial cells never ever conduct electric impulse. The glial cells are actually, they sur surround the neurons and provide support uh, for insulation between them. Glial cells are the most abundant cell types in the central nervous system. They are even uh, more than the actual neurons. So the types of uh, glial cells include, there are actually six types of uh, glial cells, uh, but uh, we have divided them into, we're just going to uh, divide them in just a bit, but you have to remember in the basic concept, we have total uh, six type of glial cells. That is the uh, Schwann cells, satellite cell, I don't know why they call it satellite cell, and the oligodendrocytes, and the astrocytes, which are kind of the stars, you know, kind of remember the word astro, you know, kind of it gives a concept of sky and astronomy. So astrocytes, kind of the shape of a star, the microglia, we're just coming back to this one, and the epidemal cells. So these are the six basic types of the glial cells. So now just get to the basic again. There are two groups of cells that is comprised the human nervous system. That is the neurons that we have already uploaded a video about. You can check it out. And another one is this one that is the neuroglial and we're going to talk about a neuroglial. So neuroglial a neurons transmit electric signals. These do not. So there are a number of different, uh, different neuroglial within the central and peripheral nervous system. So these different types of uh, neuroglial play distinct fundamental roles in supporting the activity of neurons. So now just come to the neuroglial cells in the central nervous system. So in the central nervous system, we actually got these four neuroglial cells. Schwann and satellite cells are included in the neuroglial cells of the peripheral nervous system. So if somebody asks you what neuroglial cells are found in the peripheral nervous system, you would be saying the Schwann cell and the satellite cell. But if they ask you what type of uh, neuroglial cells are found in the central nervous system, you'll be probably going to ask, tell the names of these four cells, that is oligodendritis and the macroglia and astrocytes and in the end, epi epidemal. All right, so let's talk about, a little bit about them, a little bit detail about them, not in that much detail, but let, let us know what these cells actually do. Uh, starting from the Schwann cells, actually uh, they, you know, they, they actually, uh, first remember that the Schwann cells and the uh, Serral cells are from the uh, peripheral nervous system, neuroglial of peripheral nervous system, remember this one. These two, neuroglial of peripheral nervous system. So the Schwann cells, which is actually myelinate axons in the peripheral nervous system. Remember this, protect axons and between these Schwann cells we have node of Ranavir. We've just talked about the node of Ranavir in a little bit detail in the previous video about the uh, structure of neurons. You can check that out as well. But the Schwann cell actually, uh, actually myelinate the axons in the peripheral nervous system. Let me just show you how they myelinate axons in the peripheral nervous system. I have another diagram for that one. So look at this diagram. Uh, these are actually how the Schwann cells, this is the axon, this is the soma, these are the dendrites in this axon. The axon is surrounded by the Schwann cell, which kind of uh, uh, kind of protect the Schwann cells. And in between the Schwann cells, we have got the node of Ranavir. In the previous video, we have already talked about the node of Ranavir. You can check out the information, what is related to the node of Ranavir. Let's get back to other cells as well. Another type of cell of the peripheral nervous system is the satellite cell. So what actually satellite cell do is related to the peripheral nervous system. So this one actually regulates your nutrition of the neuron and, uh, the, uh, and neurotransmitter levels around neuron in ganglia. So this is uh, the function of this one. Now let's move to the neuroglia of the central nervous system. Uh, let's start by this one, oligodendrocytes. 
All right, what does oligodendrocytes do? It's actually, in the, in the sense, we, when we were talking about the, uh, talking about the peripheral nervous system, the, what was Sean cells were doing? They were myelinating the peripheral nervous system's uh, neuron or neuro exons, right? In a similar case, in the central nervous system, this is the same function of the Schwann cell. What do they do? You look at this picture. What are they doing? They are actually, they are actually myelinating the neuro exons of the uh, neurons of the central nervous system. So you can say that oligodendrocytes myelinate exons in the central nervous system and provide an overall structure, or you can say overall framework, structural framework, all right? Now let's talk about the astrocytes, the probably star cells. So these are important because they maintain the blood brain barrier, remember that. Blood brain barrier and preserve the chemical environment by recycling the ions and neurotransmitters. This is very important, you know. You have to remember the function of this boy. And let's move to one, the, the macrogilia, which is also really important because this one is kind of remove toxins and debris of the, from the central nervous system. So probably we're going to define it as something like remove cell debris, waste, and pathogens uh, via phagocytosis. So uh, who is doing phagocytosis in our neuro, uh, central nervous system? So this is the, this boy called the microglia, all right? And now let's move to the epi, ependymal cells. Kind of hard to pronounce you cannot, because of the P, but we have to remember it. Ependymal uh, cells, which are also the neurogal of the central nervous system. And its function is kind of, you know, line ventricle Ventricles in the brain, uh, br ventricles are related to the brain, and the central canal, the spine, the central canal of the spine, and are in involved in the production of cerebrospinal fluid. You, you see their structure, they're kind of sex, you know, they kind of release uh, the fluid from these structures. So these ependymal cells are called are actually their function is the main function is they release the cerebrospinal fluid all right we have just uh, overall covered up everything in this uh, uh, this idea let's just get another review a quick review Sean cells protect myelinate what peripheral nervous system exon satellite cell peripheral nervous system nutrient oligocyte similar function to the Sean cell which actually myelinate the exon of the uh, central nervous system astrocyte actually uh, blood barrier you know brain blood barrier microglia you know kind of remove debris and whole thing epidermal cells what don't you remember this is the boy which released the cerebrospinal fluid all right, this is all about today's topic, which was on the types of the neurons, but we discussed a little bit uh, better in this concept. So if you think you need anything, we can explain it in easy concept. Please make sure to give us a comment and let us know what would you like from Tig's schooling. Thank you.